Hello guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Wakas. The topic which I'm going to discuss today is related to the cold storage room design. So I'm going to use this uh, software cool selector provided by Denfoss for cold storage room design. So first let's move back to our Excel sheet. You can see that uh, this is our cold storage room which we are going to design. This is the length, this is the width and this is the height. So room dimensions are given in here and these are the inner dimensions length 10 meter width 5 meter height 4 meter and uh, panel insulation which we used in here is polyurethane 100 mm thickness and floor is uh, made of concrete and there is no insulation we used in here so it's no, not insulated floor and ambient condition is depends on location so I'm talking about uh, Abu Dhabi UAE so Abu Dhabi ambient condition is 46 degrees Celsius so that means 115 degrees Fahrenheit so ambient condition of Abu Dhabi is 46 degrees Celsius that means outside temperature and the surrounding conditions surrounding conditions means the temperature of uh, the spaces adjacent to this cold storage room so normally we keep uh, temperature uh, 22.5 to 26 degrees celsius for surroundings so let's say we keep here is 23 degrees celsius of the surrounding temperature surrounding spaces temperature and humidity we keep for thermal comfort is like 50 to 60 percent so here we have taken 55 percent relative humidity and uh, below floor temperature is uh, 12 degrees celsius we kept in here normally we keep 10 to 12 so i kept 12 here and uh, this is the most important thing for cold storage room design that is goods what type of goods you are going to store their storage life and storage temperature so the uh, goods which we are going to store inside here are the vegetables and in vegetables we are storing broccoli in here you can see that broccoli we are going to store inside and uh, storage life and storage temperature so where you will get this data storage life and storage temperature this is the table recommended temperature relative humidity approximate uh, storage life of the fruits and vegetables is given in here provided by the agricultural department you can see that different products are given in here from arranged alphabetically from a to z and their storage temperature is given in here relative humidity and approximate storage life is given here so we are talking about uh, broccoli so you can see this is the broccoli uh, so you can see that the storage temperature is 0 degrees celsius that means 32 degrees fahrenheit and uh, relative humidity is uh, 95 to 100 and approximate storage life is like 10 to 14 days so maximum two weeks we can store so Let's move back to our software cool selector which we are going to use to design cold storage room. So first of all this is the main interface. First of all you have to go to commercial applications and here you, you will find the cold room. So you have to select this cold room. When you select cold room this uh, screen will pop up. There you find two methods to design the cold room. First one is wizard type and second one is manually define. So uh, what is the difference between these two methods manually defined method is used only when you know all the parameters then you will use this manual defined cold room if you don't know some of the parameters like in our case uh, we don't know the quantity of the food or mass of the food how much uh, food will be stored inside so this is one of the important parameter so that's why we are going to use this uh, wizard type because uh, it will help you to estimate some parameters like you don't know like quantity of the goods it is not known so it is recommended to use uh, this wizard type so I'm gonna use this wizard type when you select this one this screen will pop up you have to give the dimensions uh, so make sure we have inner dimension so make sure that inner dimension selected and you can see in here length is 10 meter width is 5 and height is 4 so it's 10 meter this width is 5 and height is 4 meters so after that you have to give the room surroundings temperature like uh, uh, we have to give the uh, temperature conditions adjacent to this uh, cold storage room so as we said that we have maintained 23 degrees celsius 
with 55% relative humidity in the surroundings. So we have to change this to 23 degrees Celsius and relative humidity 55% and temperature below floor we said it's 12 degrees Celsius. So 12 degrees Celsius and floor is uninsulated, it's not insulated so I'm gonna uncheck this one and after that you have to select next. Now you have to uh, check what kind of goods you want to store in the cold storage room. So here there are different types of uh, uh, products are given in here. So in our case we said that we are going to store uh, broccoli vegetables. So we have to select the vegetables from here. Vegetables and the quantity per day. We don't know the quantity. So how uh, we can do that one? We can we will estimate the mass of the goods from the room volume. We know the room volume, so we can estimate. So estimate mass from the room volume. You have to select this one, and then this screen will pop up, and then you have to give the two things in here. First percentage of the room used for the goods, and second percentage of the goods changed each day. So percentage of the goods uh, uh, which we which will occupy in the room. We don't want to fill up uh, like 80% or 90%. We need to keep two things in mind while giving this percentage of the room use for the goods. We want to keep the space so that person can easily move in between the racks and he can easily remove the goods or he's, he can easily place the goods. So we need to keep that thing in mind. Also, uh, we need to keep in mind that we don't want to place go goods too much close that there will be no air circulation between the goods so we want to keep a little space between the goods so that air can easily flow in between the goods so in order to that we will keep a uh, percentage of the room goods like uh, 60% so that means 60% of uh, this room volume will be occupied by the goods and 40% will be empty so that person can easily walk in and there's a there there's a gap between the goods so percentage of the goods changed each day Obviously, you will gonna uh, put some new foods and the new food will be replaced by the used food. So you have to every day you have to replace the food. So percentage of the goods change each day. We're gonna change this one to like, let's say 10% of the goods we are changing each day. So we'll change this to 10%. So after that, you have to select OK. And one more thing. Uh, uh, as you can see that when we estimate it, then total mass in the room is 54,000 kgs and quantity per day is 5,400 kg. That means we have to replace this quantity every day, 5,400. So, so here you have to consider one more thing that is uh, inlet temperature. Inlet temperature by default it's 5.5 degrees Celsius. So how we uh, select the inlet temperature? It depends on the storage temperature. So if storage inlet temperature should be 5 degrees above the storage temperature by default because goods uh, because the goods are assumed to be pre-cooled before storing in the cold storage room. So we keep 5 degrees inlet temperature 5 degrees above the cold storage temperature. So here cold storage temperature a cold room storage temperature is 0 degrees Celsius for broccoli. So 5 degrees above that means we have to keep 5 in here. So after that you have to select next. And the storage temperature we know that we just checked from the excel sheet. Broccoli storage is 0 degrees Celsius. So we will change this one to 0 degrees Celsius. And relative humidity is from 95 to 100%. So we'll keep the 95 same. And uh, based on this uh, storage temperature and relative humidity, operating hours will be calculated. That is 12.6 hours. That means our refrigeration system should run 12.6 hours to maintain 0 degree Celsius storage temperature and 95% relative humidity. If we change the relative humidity from 95 to let's say 98% and then estimate the operating hours again, then operating hours will be changed and it will be reduced. So let's estimate operating hours again. And now operating hours is 11.1 hours. So it depends on storage temperature and relative humidity. So let's change it back to 95 and keep the operating hours 12.6 for this refrigeration system. 
and uh, we know that the uh, insulation panels which we used in here are uh, polyurethane 100 mm thickness so we're going to select the same polyurethane and we are going to select uh, 100 mm thickness after that you have to select this one and this screen will pop up here you can review your cold room load you can see or you can edit uh, the parameters in here if you want to change you can change in here so now air exchange which we did not define before let's talk about this one temperature we know that 23 degrees celsius and 55 percent relative humidity in the surroundings area so now talk about the door opening since we kept 10% uh, uh, of the goods changed each day so that means door will be open uh, you can say that it's regularly here we have three options in here often regular and rare since uh, uh, we are changing like 10% of the goods and uh, you know that the mass of the good which we can store is for maximum two weeks it's not a very long period it's like a short period if you see that some of them store even for six months seven to eight weeks four to eight weeks so this is a short storage period so that means door will open like uh, regularly it's not if it is like very long period then we can keep like door is open rarely so that because of the long short uh, storage time we will keep this one like uh, regularly so if you change this one, you can see that uh, based on this regular and our input parameters, air exchange rate is automatically calculated. You can even change this one if you want, but this is calculated based on our parameters. So if you change this one to, you can see 3.54, it's now if you change this one to rare, it will decrease 2.12. So in our case, it is regular We're opening the door because of the low storage, uh, less storage uh, time. So it's regular. So after that, you have to select the panels. Here you will calculate the heat load or heat transfer. So one is standard option available, other is custom. I'm gonna select the custom panel. The reason I'm selecting custom panel because uh, uh, left side, right side, front side. There we have a conditioned space in the surrounding. But the back side of this cold storage room, it is open. Uh, it is like exposed to the sun or exposed to the ambient conditions. So that's why I'm gonna select custom panel. So here you can see the front, left, right, back, ceiling and floor. So front will keep, uh, we know that the uh, sounding temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. We talked in the first place. So we're gonna change this one to 23. Left is also 23, right is also 23. And the back side we said that is exposed to the sun or exposed to the ambient condition. We know the ambient condition is 46 degrees Celsius in Abu Dhabi. So I'm going to change this to 46, back side 46, ceiling I'm going to take same 23 and the floor we said that we kept 12 and we said that it is not insulated so we will uncheck this one. So once you are done with the heat transfer, let, let's move to our this additional loads. So based on uh, uh, the room area the lightning load is automatically calculated that is 400 watt so how did we get this 400 watt you know that the length and the width length is 10 and width is 5 so 10 cross 5 that is 50 square meters so based on 8 watt per square meter thumb rule this lightning load is calculated so 8 watt per square meter means multiply with 8 you will get 400 watt so 400 watt is calculated automatically in here based on 8 watt per square meters so instead of using this 8 watt per square meter uh, i will go more precisely and i will take the electrical load sheet i will check from there how many lights are used inside the cold storage room let's say we have used eight light bulbs each with 40 watt so 40 watt for each and 8 light bulbs that means 320 watt is the total so I will change this one to 320 watts. So based on our uh, input parameters the fan, fan power is automatically calculated that is almost 500 watt and uh, number of uh, and then people how much time people will spend inside 
this uh, cold storage room obviously you have to store the material inside and then you have to uh, remove the goods for the usage so how much time people will consume inside so since we said that door opening is regular so we will keep this same two hours per day if we had kept this one to uh, rare uh, then we can change this to one hour per day so to, in the whole day it will be one hour per day but since we said that door opening is regularly so that's why we keep this two hours per day and uh, and you can see that the additional other load other load if you have any equipment inside this cold storage room then you have to add uh, that load also in here and the last thing here is a defrost you can see that the defrost heater this power is basically defrost heater power and you can see there are two options available in here one is electric other is natural since uh, natu natural is not uh, available in here the reason why it is not available because room temperature storage temperature which we selected is zero degree celsius at zero degree celsius natural defrost is not possible minimum 4 degrees celsius temperature is required for natural defrost let's say if i change this to 4 degrees celsius then you can see that natural option will be available so if i change this to 4 you can see that natural defrost is available since uh, in our case storage temperature is 0 we'll keep it 0 and by default electric uh, heater defrost heater is uh, selected in here and automatically we had calculated the power based on the inputs that is 3571 watt and the defrost per day we're gonna keep this one three by default because uh, uh, when we open the door very uh, like uh, average amount of humidity uh, it will enter so we'll keep defrost three uh, times per day so if it was uh, uh, door opening was rare so we can keep this defrost one time per day so since this is regular so we can keep defrost two to three times we kept three times so after that you have to select next and then you will select the region of your area so since i'm talking about the middle east uae united Arab emirates so i'm going to select middle east and then the types of uh, preferred type i'm going to prefer like optima or whatever your preference you can select accordingly so you can select optima and then select uh, your refrigerant what type of refrigerant you want to select in here so i'm gonna select r134a because this is environmental friendly so just select this one next so once you select this one you can see that your load summary total required cooling load is 10.06 kilowatt and uh, cold room temperature condition which we selected you can see in here operating hours based on storage temperature and relative humidity is 12.6 hours refrigeration system will run and here are the different types of loads you can see in here calculated transmission load infiltration goods respiration cooling light fan defrost total load is 10.06 kilowatt and based on our inputs so you can see that the dew point temperature calculated is minus 8 degrees celsius and super heat calculated is 5.2 kelvin and after that you have option like uh, thermostatic expansion valve material what kind of thermostatic expansion valve you want like stainless steel or brass so i'm gonna select the brass in here so after that you have to select it will generate uh, the equipments for you best equipments suited for your application you can see that this is a condensing unit which they have selected for our case based on our load calculation so you can see that this is the unit which they have selected OPMGUE148M LA060 so based on the condensing unit it has also selected the controller for us so if you select this condensing unit you can see that uh, the performance in here you can see that in valve uh, over here you can see the performance details in here you can see other information like technical data if you want to check you can check technical data you can check the spare parts you can check the electrical specifications like how much is the fan current is the one amps fan power consumption is 500 watt or you can select this uh, performance and you can read the data in here also r134 a refrigerant total cooling kilowatt is 10.64 r134 
also you can generate a report you just go to the report and then you have to go here left side cold room one and whatever you want to include in your report you can select like if you want uh, technical data cooling capacity power consumption you want the current you want the cop so after that you just uh, update here and it will update the report so now it has updated the report you can read so you can see the refrigerant uh, you can see the evaporating pressure everything is in here you can see the charts so even uh, if you want to save it in the PDF you just go to PDF and then you have to select OK and then save it wherever you want you can just give the location and then save it I'm gonna save on desktop save it also if you want you can see the report in here also also if you want to edit uh, in your report if you want to make some changes so you just uh, go back to your selection and then you have to go to edit selection it will take you back what type of method you want to select again wizard or we selected the wizard so we we'll just select the wizard this one and it will keep it will remember the inputs which you put in here so you don't have to change you just have to next and then if you want to make any changes you can make the changes so this is how you can design your cold storage room based on your information like what kind of vegetable or fruit you are going to store and the relative humidity average data is given in here so based on this you have to give the input uh, storage temperature relative humidities everything so i hope you guys learned something from this video for more videos keep watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you